What's up everybody? So I've been looking for something to play my NES games on and I gave the Classic 2 HD a try. It's one of the more affordable budget type clone consoles, which is usually what I get. I try and go for the more affordable stuff, but this wasn't for me. It had some really weird sound emulation stuff with the NES games that I couldn't get past. I decided to spend the money and get a quality product. So I picked up the Retro USB AVS. Before I continue, I have to thank the supporters of the channel. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have been able to pick one of these up. So thank you so much to the following people. Huge thanks to Andre G, Batman, Craig Livesley, Den Cardoso, Dor, Eric Colon, Jordi Alex, Jason Hallbrooks, John Westby, Magnesium Winterjuice, Mike Muniz, Rick67, Ronald Hernandez, Sam Torres, Skralings, Travis Morton, William Wind, and Yaroslav Orozov. The Retro USB AVS. That's a lot of letters. This thing allows to play your original NES games on modern TVs. It's an FPGA system, which means you'll get the best quality, both sound and visuals, for your games. But that means you're going to be paying more for it. This runs at about $180, and you can get these on the Retro USB website. You can also get the controller that comes with it, but I opted out. I'm using an original controller with this system just because the controller was a little expensive. I think it was about $50, maybe a little bit more. And it was giving me early PS3 controller boomerang vibes. So I passed on that and stuck with just the system. Let's open it up and see what comes with it. All right, let's find out what's inside the box of the Retro USB AVS. Highly recommended by you guys. A little bit of specs on the back. Nothing special about the box itself, so let's grab Betty and get to work. Um, uh, huh. What? Sorry, Betty, I guess I got nothing for you this time. How does this open? What am I doing with this? Oh, I see it's from the side here. All right, well, that's different. Ooh, there we go. Have the HDMI cord, USB and micro USB for power. I see you hiding over here, little box. What do you got? I have an idea. Let's see. Yep, there we go. We have our power adapter, USB power adapter, standard power adapter, five volts, one amp. All right, let's have a look at this. Already, it reminds me a lot of the original Nintendo. And the instruction manual, okay. So obviously not exactly like the original Nintendo, which is a good thing. I like it when companies kind of do their own thing. This is more like a modern Nintendo for today. You have the power and reset buttons on the top as well as this light that will turn red when powered on. Now if these buttons look familiar, apparently they came from a surplus from old NES systems and these are the original buttons that were put on the original Nintendo Entertainment System. On the front you see we have four controller ports so it has a built-in NES 4 score for four player games. Not much going on the back of the system. You have HDMI output. Oh, and this actually looks like a mini USB port, not micro. Hold on. I may have been disillusioned by these caps. Ah, yes, that is mini USB, not micro. My mistake. And this big sucker over here is to be used with Famicom expansion accessories. Last thing to do, you have this awesome cover that flips up very similar to the original NES. And what is that? The AVS logo. So this is a front loader style system. Your NES games get pushed in just like the original and then you see these pins down here those are for Famicom games so it has its own port for Famicom games no need to get a new adapter you can do that all on the system itself so it's very reminiscent of the original NES how you load your games on here close the door and get gaming colorization is done really really well on here too it's not exactly the gray of the original Nintendo released here in the states it's got kind of a yellowish hue to it like an aged NES. Not super yellow like when it's really old and like sun bleached, but a little bit of a more tan hue to the main color here. Removing the game was actually really easy too. Didn't feel like I was tearing anything up either with my game or the pins. There you have it, everything that comes with the Retro USB AVS. The presentation on this thing is great. I love that they have original buttons here and that you have the open up lid, even though it's not exactly the same as the original NES. I'm really impressed with how it looks. They even got the color scheme right. Really, really enjoy the system's looks. If you saw my classic 2HD review, you'll know that I was not impressed 
with the gameplay of the NES games on that system. But this, I can tell you, does the best job I've ever seen with these games. The graphics look amazing and the sound is perfect. Now I'm not the best judge when it comes to input lag or sound lag, but I didn't notice any lag at all when using the system. So is the AVS worth the price point that Retro USB is asking for? Well, that depends on how well it plays the games. So let's turn it on, take a look. Upon hitting the power button and getting that red light reminiscent of the original NES, you are greeted with a very simple menu screen with five options. You have the start cartridge option, cheat codes option, input options, video options, and scoreboard. I'll let you know now that the scoreboard function no longer works. It was linked to the Nintendo Age website so you can upload your own scores, but that website is no longer, so this function is defunct. The start cart option will do just that, it'll start your game up. If you recognize the icon for the cheat codes option, that is correct. It is reminiscent of the old Game Genie for the NES. This option allows you to add five Game Genie codes. Hit the A button, you can insert your own code as you wish, or you can use one of the preset codes at the bottom. That's two more codes than the original Game Genie, and not only that, you can use a physical Game Genie on the system to add three more codes for a total of eight if you wish. Under input options, you can change the menu button combination to return to this menu. You can also change the buttons to toggle those Game Genie codes on or off. The expansion EMU option allows you to use the four score with Famicom games. Because of how that system's hardware was, the controllers were attached to the system. You couldn't add additional controllers. With this switched on, you can actually use the four score to play four player Famicom games. Turbo options for the A and B buttons, and this autoplay option allows you to go right into the game when you boot up your system rather than starting on the menu screen. This is not play your games for you. And going down to the four score pro option, you can push left to right to turn on or off the additional controllers. There are many video options for the AVS. The first one is the NTSC or PAL mode, pushing left and right. We'll choose which video mode you want to use. Next, we got the pixel aspect option. This allows you to choose between nine different aspect ratio options. Unfortunately, the different aspect ratios aren't labeled on here and you kind of have to guess with your eyesight. I'm not really a fan of 1.1 and I hate 16 by 9 for my original NES games. My preference is the third option from the left. I think this is as close to 4 by 3 I can get. Possibly the fourth option. The vert border option allows you to adjust the top and bottom borders of your gameplay. This is to hide some additional graphics that you may not have seen on the old CRT TV but playing them on modern displays they do show up. Next we have the scan lines option with seven different adjustment levels. The left side option is just like the vert border option. On the left side of the screen some games had information over there you would normally see on a CRT TV but once again on modern displays they do show up. By enabling this option it hides that left side extra line of graphics. Extra sprites is one of my favorite options on here and unfortunately I don't have a game I can really showcase it. But this increases the sprites on a horizontal line from 8 to 16 which helps with the sprite flicker on a lot of games. Like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 the arcade game or Monster in My Pocket. The EXP volume option allows you to adjust the volume on games that had extra sound channels like Castlevania 3 for the Famicom. The palette option allows you to choose from four different palette arrangements with original, unsaturated version 6, YUV version 3, and FCEUX. The last setting here for interpolation. Once again on modern screens, because these games weren't meant to look so sharp, you can get what's called shimmering on some of the graphics. When you turn on interpolation, it blurs the graphics just a little bit so that shimmering effect isn't so noticeable. So just like what we did with the classic 2 HD, let's compare how the AVS plays these NES games compared to as close to the original hardware as we can on the NES Classic.
freaking perfect. The only downside to this menu system is while you're in game and if you return to the menu, you restart your game. You don't get to start off where you last left off. There's no type of save state or anything like that because these games are being played directly from the cartridge. So just be careful of that if you're in the middle of a hard part of a game and you wanted to change a setting by going to the menu, you will lose all your progress. Something I did like about the AVS menu is you can tell if your cartridge isn't inserted properly or if it's dirty because you get different icons on the screen here like the start cartridge icon looks completely different from the original and the game genie icon isn't lit up in color. Overall I'm really happy with this menu there's not a lot to it but honestly you don't need a lot for the NES. I do like the look of the menu too if the NES had a menu system back then it would probably look something very similar to this. And I think it's amazing that this system comes with so many accessories like the 4Score, its own Game Genie, another cartridge slot for Famicom games and expansion modules for those games. I really could not be happier with this system. You can tell that Retro USB really cares about the old school gaming and they try to give you the exact same experience with modern hardware. So for somebody like me who's more on the casual side, this is absolutely worth the price point. Some of the more hardcore collectors will probably go with an original NES modded, but for me, this does the job exactly how I want. Besides the door being kind of funky and hitting the Famicom games, and every time you go into the system menu, it restarts your game. Beyond that, this is a perfect system. So if you're like me and you're more on the casual side, definitely pick one of these up. It's really worth the money. Quality comes out of price. But I was more than happy to pay this. And once again, huge thank you to my supporters of the channel for allowing me to do that. So let me know below in the comments what you thought about the Retro USB AVS. Is it too expensive? Are you okay with some of the more budget consoles? Do they do the job for you that maybe this really is asking too much for? Or if you've purchased one of these, what do you think about it? Do you enjoy it as much as I do? Let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And that's all I have for you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, so I've been blah blah blah. I can't do that. Ugh. So I decided to spend a little bit morning and morning. And what I picked up was the Retro US... Jeez. Next we have the Scanline option with Severant... Severant. This thing allows... This thing allows you to... This thing allows you to play your original NES... Sound and visuals... For, for your... If you recognize the icon for the Cheat Codes option... I meant to turn off commentary. Oh, that's fine. And with that... But of course you're going to be paying a lot... There you go, everything that comes with... Now if you remember on my classic 2HD review, I had a bunch... Nine different aspect radio... Radio. Was not pleased with the quality of the... If you saw my old school... Classic, classic 2HD? You can also... You... I really could not be happier with this system. I am very... And every time you go... Next we have the paste... You won't get the kind of... You... So if, so if you're more... Are you okay with some of the... Let me know, let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Jordy Alex. Rick67, Travis Morton, Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, Yaroslav Orudzov, Andre G, Den Cardoso, Dor, Jason Hallbrooks, Craig Livesley, Magnesium Winterjuice, John Westby, Ronald Hernandez, and Batman.